Hey everybody, this is Dr. Carmen Bryant. Welcome back to my channel. I'm the host of Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Thank you so much for those of you that are new to my channel and those of you that have been with me for a while. So I wanted to revisit a topic that we've talked about because I hear people talk about it all the time. So I hear people talk about it in general. I hear people talk about it um, even in counseling sessions or in coaching sessions. And the one thing that you notice happens over and over again, which drives you crazy is projection. So let's revisit projection. Okay, so imagine yourself at a movie theater. And in that movie theater, you're looking at a screen that's in front of you. You know and I know there's nothing on the screen. There's nothing behind the screen. You know, little kids are like, what's behind the screen? It's coming up the screen. You know, so you know that there's nothing on that screen. Well, behind you, if you turn around and look behind you, some of you know, some of you uh, old folks, mature people, know that there used to be a movie reel up there so you can hear it. You know, you look up there and you saw the movie reel. They don't use movie reels anymore. I think now they use CDs or whatever that they use uh, up in the movie room. So if you turn around and look behind you, you can see the projector sitting there and whatever is inside of that box, when they turn it on, projects on this screen. Now it's small in here and they may see it on the computer, but when it projects on the screen, it becomes huge. So now if you're, especially if you're wearing 3D glasses, it, it feels like you're almost in the movie. So, you, you know, and if you're really into the movie, you don't notice anything around you. You're just in this movie or you're really into this movie. But it's the projector. So it's portraying on this is it, is on the projector. We all know that. Well, when you're dealing with and, you know, a lot of times, especially on this channel, my focus is always narcissist abuse. So I'm always focused on the behaviors, you know, and the MO of the narcissist. <clears throat> However, toxic people people in general do it quite often. Uh, but, you know, like I said, you know, our focus is the narcissist, but I just want to make that in general. So we don't just make it just the narcissist. Toxic people do it too. And oftentimes you have done it yourself. Sigmund Freud, I think he hypothesized that it was the ego trying to protect itself. So it's a matter of, you know, you have this turmoil going on on the inside of you and it's a defense mechanism to protect that ego. And so instead of taking accountability or looking at yourself, it's too painful to see your own flaws. So you'll project it on someone else. I give you a prime example. Let's say and let's just say this person is not even a narcissist. Let's say you have a man that's married, he's at work, and he has an attractive coworker. He's attracted to the coworker, or he may start having some romantic feelings for her, or he may be attracted to the coworker. Instead of him just being honest with himself and saying, she's very attractive, I'm attracted to her, what's going on, let me get myself together. And she's probably paying no attention to him. She's just friendly, she's being herself, she's doing whatever. Instead, he may project and say, she's flirting with me. Now she's accused of something and she's trying to figure out, well, when did I start flirting, started flirting with you? You know, where's this coming from? Now, even with a narcissist, you know, a narcissist, now that's called projection. Even with a narcissist though, you have to remember that a narcissist on the inside of them, they deal with jealousy. They're very competitive. They don't want anybody to get more attention to them. They don't, you know, they want to be the boss. They want to be the person with all the information. You know, if you're getting too much information, that this is what's in their heart. I always say out of the mouth comes the abundance of the heart. So whatever is in a person's heart is going to come out, especially a narcissist. That's why I tell you guys all the time, if you be quiet and you listen, they will tell you exactly where they're at. Now, most of you get frustrated because you're trying to explain, you're trying to talk, you're trying to rectify. I'm trying to make sure that we got an understanding. And then you get this wordplay, projection, pointing fingers. A narcissist can put out, but they can't take what they put out. If they give constructive criticism, they can't handle it when you point out to them how they are. And also you have to remember, and if you go read like, I mean, if you go and um, look at videos uh, where people are uh, professionals at reading body language, you know, we have, we have things, uh, and this is what I've learned, and I can't think of the, um, the, the it's called, it's, it's a particular name for it, but there are things that you know about yourself that no one knows about anybody. I mean, that you, there are things that you know about yourself that no one knows about you. There we go. There are things you know about yourself that no one knows about you. There are things that you know about yourself that other people know about you. There are things that people know about you that you don't re realize or recognize with yourself. So a lot of times when people point their fingers and tell you about yourself, a lot of times you may not see it or recognize it, or sometimes you may know it, but you don't accept it or you don't take accountability for it. So a lot of times a narcissist has no problem pointing their fingers at people, but they don't, they have a problem when people turn around and point their fingers back at them. Hence, given the scapegoat, which a scapegoat, that's exactly what they do. So they struggle with that. And so um, a narcissist 
is uh, you have to remember that they are in constant protective mode. Everything is inverted. The way that they think is that everybody thinks the same way that they think. They think that everybody is just like them. Vindictive. They think that they're liars. They think that they're competitive. That's why, why do you think it's so easy for a narcissist to pick out certain behaviors in other people? Because it's grandiose in them. This is exactly how they are. Most people are flawed. You know, most people have a little pride. Most people, you know, whatever, project, deny, you know, wordplay, whatever to get. But a lot of times a person that is healthy emotionally or psychologically or personality, kind of healthy, you know, we, we don't even know what normal is anymore. But those are the type of people that are capable of, you know what, you're right. Let me look at myself. Let me get myself together. Before I start pointing my fingers at other people, you know what, it reminds me of myself. I do exactly what it is that I say. A narcissist can't do that. They pick out everything that is very much like them and they either they project it on you because this is how you're thinking. And this only reason why you're doing this is because of this. You're vindictive and this is this and this and this and because and the reason why and you have a problem and you have the... They're telling you exactly what they're feeling about themselves. Even if you don't feel that way, they're telling you exactly what they're thinking and what's on their mind. And the more they talk, if you listen to them, they'll tell you exactly how they feel about you. Family, friends, cousins, teachers, you know, it doesn't matter who they are. Loved ones, boyfriend, girlfriend, who, who knows, whoever. But they tell you exactly what it is that they're thinking if you stop and listen. To try to rectify once you've identified it and whether it's family or friends, that's why I tell you sometimes it comes from, you know, a narcissist knows that the closer that they are to you, whether it's family or, or a boyfriend, girlfriend, whoever, you know, whatever, uh, non-binary, whatever. But the people that are closest to you have the closest access to your heart. So they know it's easy to hurt you because of how close, you know, how close you two are. And when you put up boundaries and you decide I'm not going to tolerate this. I don't have anything to do for it. You have to be prepared for the smear campaign because everything reverses back and everything that they do now you're doing. They project onto you. They don't see their faults. They don't see anything wrong with them. They don't see, they don't see it. They'll tell you that they have problems. They'll tell you I have problems. I know I have problems, uh, you know, but, and then they point right back at you. The whole conversation always reverses back to you because they can't handle the criticism. They can't handle not being perfect. They can't handle that. And, and they'll tell you, well, I don't think that I'm perfect. Well, I don't think that I'm perfect. They may not think verbally that they're perfect, but they don't think that they're as flawed as everybody else around them. They think that everyone else around them is more flawed. You know, you have those that are religious narcissists. You have those that are, uh, you know, in the, in the work field, lawyers and doctors and therapists, especially therapists. A lot of times you'll find therapists, you know, because they deal with the minds and the hearts and the emotions of, um, you know, clientele. And so when you're dealing with the, the heart, the mind and the emotions of a person, people come in and they trust therapists to know what they're talking about. They trust therapists by giving them, uh, you know, information about themselves, but, uh, to, to open up and pour out to a therapist. And then you have those that are narcissistic therapists that they're getting fuel because you trust me. I have all the answers. I know everything is easier for, for someone to say, like I try to practice is, you know, you know what child, I don't know. And you hear me say it. I have no idea. I have to go research that. I don't know. You're right. I don't know. I have no idea. Let me go figure that out, you know, or that doesn't make any sense, you know. So, but especially when you're dealing with uh, uh, um, narcissists that are in the counseling field, nursing field, they're in certain positions. They can't, uh, for a lot of them, it's almost like they have a God complex. I'm talking about the narcissists. They have like this God complex. No one knows more than I do. You know, I, I know the answers and you don't. And they try to eliminate people. They try to eliminate people to get them out of that circle, to isolate people to them because I know what I'm talking about. Grandiose, grandiosity is that that pride. And I'm going to talk about at, that, at the conference, I'm going to talk about that mantle of pride and where it stems from, which is the same thing that the narcissist struggles with. But projection is when someone takes what is going on on the inside and project it on you. For those that may not have a personality disorder, they're struggling with their own thoughts. They won't take accountability of how they're thinking. They won't take accountability, the truth, because, you know, think about it. Like I said, the man that, or a narcissist, a narcissist, see with certain narcissists, they don't have boundaries. So it doesn't matter whether they have an affair with other people or not, right? 
but there are certain narcissists that may also hold certain positions within a corporate um, you know, field, you know, depending on where they're at, they hold certain positions. So they know that certain things is not acceptable and will not be tolerated. However, they don't take in consideration that sometimes the feelings that they have are very normal feelings. And so they don't take accountability. So instead that they will project on someone else and smear their name so that they will feel at ease because it's not me. I didn't think this way. This is how this person is. You see what I'm saying? Narcissist. And as I said, a narcissist is going to project on you. You guys got to stop trying to argue and fight with family, argue and fight with your, your boo thing, whatever, whoever that narcissist is to you, because you're going to be caught up in a word salad. You're going to be confused. You're going to be angry. You know, it's, it goes in a circle. It is a circular conversation. It always goes in a circle. It doesn't matter what you say to them. They're always going to point their finger back at you. It doesn't matter what they say. You're going to be the one with the problem. They're not going to be the one with the problem. I got problems, but let me tell you about you. They cannot handle the ugliness of their personality. They cannot handle the ugliness of them because it takes away from their facade of perfection. Remember my book is Unmasking the Illusion of Perfection. They cannot handle when you're snatching the mask off of them by telling them about themselves. And so it's gonna be a circular conversation you're going to be upset because there's no resolution to it. So it's best a lot of times just to go ahead and just cut it off. And a lot of you deal with mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, uncles, family members that are like that. And in your mind, you're obligated and dedicated to family. And when you're obligated or you feel dedicated to family, in your mind, your obligation and your dedication is to make it right and make it work. Sometimes you have to know you got to know when to hold them. Know when to fold them. No when to walk away. No when to run. I don't know the rest of the song. Some of you guys do. I know you're going to put the words down at the bottom. But some of you guys, for the betterment or for, for your mental health or your emotional health, so you don't drive yourself crazy, so you don't question yourself, am I a bad parent? Am I a bad daughter? Am I a bad granddaughter? Am I a bad sibling? So that you don't keep questioning yourself. Sometimes it's best to walk away because some of you guys know you'll snap and then all you're going to do is argue, argue, argue. And it's just in a circle. So the same way that when you're dating or when you're in a marriage or in a relationship, in a, a, a romantic relationship, it's just a circle. And you feel like you're crazy because no matter what it is that you say, everybody sees what you can see. They know that this person is dysfunctional, but they, that, excuse me, that narcissist just doesn't see that they're dysfunctional. Everyone else is dysfunctional and everyone is worse than what I am because they can't handle the ugliness of themselves. They can't handle their toxic behavior themselves. And you pointing out to me what I look like makes me feel uh, uh, the very thing that they feel anyway, rejected, abandoned, less than important because they've got to be important. It's almost like the godfather. They got to be the godfather, the godmother. And if you take away from what they think about themselves, even though they may not say it, I don't think that way, but their behaviors tell it. There's also things called micro expressions. And I talked about this before. Micro expressions are like automatic muscle movement. Uh, and that's the best way I can explain. It's like automatic muscle movements in the face that correlates with a thought uh, that they're hiding. You got to remember in projecting, they're suppressing your, pres you, or they are pers uh, uh, suppressing these emotions and feelings and won't admit to them. So they're suppressing it, but it leaks out in the behavior. It leaks out in the, like in the military, the inflections of the voice lets you know what is going to happen. Company. That means that I need you to pay attention. I'm getting ready to say something. Right. Right means, okay, everything that I'm getting ready to say to you, we're going over to the right one on the cameras this way. But when when you hear them say, company, company means that, hey, pay attention. I'm getting ready to say something. Come to attention because I'm getting ready. No, come to parade rest because I'm getting ready to give you some instruction. Attention. So they put them at attention. Okay, now, right means the direction, whatever, whatever command comes after that, we're going in the right direction. So your mind is set to the right direction. Face. But do you notice the inflection in the voice? The inflection in the voice lets you know that something is going on. If I was to come and start screaming on the camera, most of you guys are like, what in the world is wrong with her? And I'm not, I'm happy. I am happy. What do you mean I'm not happy? Of course I'm happy. And then you notice the, the shaking of the head. Well, micro expressions, a micro expression is just a quick muscle twitch or muscle movement that correlates with the actual thought that's being suppressed in the head. And so 
oh, I love it when she sews up. But then all of a sudden you notice the face twitches like, and no, they don't realize that a person doesn't realize that is happening. It's just the muscle reacting, the, the twitches to the actual thought is I can't stand her and I can't stand when she shows up. A narcissist does it all the time. It's that micro expression and they're not, a, people are not aware of it. So for you to address it, what's wrong with you? Why'd you make that facial expression? I don't know what you're talking about because your work is so hard. So to suppress it, there's no way that you can see it. And a narcissist is arrogant anyway. There's no way that you know anything that I'm thinking in the first place, but yet their facial expression is telling it. Their body language, you know, what is not what they're saying is how they're saying what they're saying. So when they're saying something, you can almost feel the disgust behind what they're saying or the hatred or the envy or the anger behind what there's. You can feel the intensity or that what, what most people say, the, the intensity or the um, frequency or that... Um, I don't know what the word is right now. I'll think of it as I'm going, but it, it you can feel the, uh, the, the, it's the intensity, the intensity behind the words that are coming out. You know, of course I'm happy. I just told you I was happy, you know? So what happens is the facial expression, the volume, the intensity, the frequency of the voice, you know, the inflection of the voice doesn't match with what they're saying coming out of their mouth. And narcissists and people that just do this besides the narcissists, but narcissists, do not recognize that you can recognize what is going on, that you see what is going on. Their whole body becomes communication. Their whole facial expressions, their sound, you know, uh, it's not the vibe, but I, I'm going to get it in a minute. But you, you can sense everything about them, but they don't see it because they think they're hiding it from you. But what is in their heart, they don't even realize that is in their heart. They don't even realize, well, a lot of them do, but they don't even realize because, you know, at one point in time, they, they, um, they idealize you. They put you on this pedestal, but you have become competition because they can't do what you're doing. They can't be you. They can't get the attention that you're getting. And uh, a lot of time it might not be. I'm so sorry, you guys. It's, just, it's early morning. Well, it's not really early, but it's early morning and everything is in my face and I'm sitting in this light and hairs in my eyeball. So I know it's kind of distracting. So I apologize. But you have to remember that with a narcissist, um, they, they, they have this hatred inside of them anyway. They, they idolize you at one point in time. They pursued you because there was something that you have that they wanted. They wanted to be like you. They want to act like you. They mirror you. You'll notice that they do things like you do. You know, you do this and they do that. You do this at this scale, they'll start doing this at that scale. They see that you're doing this, so they got to talk to you and they want to know, you know, what you're doing, how are you doing this? Not because they're interested in what you're doing or how you're doing it. They're interested in what you're doing because that is what they want to do. This is what they want to do. So they're trying to figure out how did you do it? And you may have taken your time to do certain things and it may have taken you years to get to a certain point. They want to know how to do it so they can do it quickly. And if they can't do it quickly, it's not worth doing it. And then they have something negative to say about what you're doing. And so that idealization, there's as much as they idealize you and put you on that, that pedestal is just as much hatred that, that they will have towards you. And though in their mind, they may be thinking, but you're my mother, but you're my father or you're my sister, you're my brother, you're my cousin, you're my niece, nephew, whatever. So in their minds, it's like, okay, but I'm not supposed to, so I can't let them know that I do. But there's this hatred inside of them for you, and it doesn't matter. But you're my, you're my brother, sister, wife, uncle, brother, sister, cousin, auntie, whatever. So I'm not supposed to. I'm not supposed to hate you. Notice? I'm not supposed to hate you, and you know that I don't hate you. You know I don't hate you. You know, but they're telling, they're giving you the answers. So y'all, I just want to go back and revisit projection. Because some of you guys are having, you're struggling with projection. When you put up boundaries, be prepared that people make you feel bad for your boundaries. You know, especially the narcissist, narcissist family, they make you feel bad about boundaries. When you dissing yourself and you no longer want to be a part of that, and you notice even the whole family is like that. And you know they're toxic and you decide that I don't want to have anything to do with that. You become the bad guy. You're breaking tradition. You're breaking, you know, uh, this is what we do. You know, you are, you got issues and this is why, this is why, this is why. But of course, they're not going to tell anybody about themselves, but you guys are getting more information. So you'll know you put up boundaries and you have a choice. You have a choice what to do with your time. And your time is not everybody's time. You have the right to determine how much time I'm going to spend with you or even if I want to spend time with you or give you my time in conversation or time and thought. That is your, you can't get time back. You know, we, you, we're aging, we're getting younger, but we're aging. Uh, you know, time is going on. 
You can't get by wasted time. And when you give people your time and they waste your time, then you feel bad. And then when they talk about you because you won't give them their time, your time, what can you do? They're still going to be abusive. You're still going to be upset and unhappy when you're there. Some of you guys hate holiday season because you know you have to be around toxic family members. You don't have to be there. And you just have to be prepared. Your name is going to be smeared. People are going to talk about you, but at least you have a peace of mind. At least, you know, when you go on vacation or when you go places, you don't have to go and visit your family at wherever location that they're at, whatever state that they're in. And you decide that this Christmas, this is where I'm going because I want to enjoy my holidays. I need peace and quiet and I just need a break. And then you need a break and you go on break and you're around your toxic family members. Come back. You need to go on vacation again just at the house to recover from the family that you were connected to. There's nothing wrong with you guys giving yourself a break. There's nothing wrong with you having boundaries. You just have to be prepared. They're going to talk about you. But what can you do? Okay, you're not messing with my job. You're not, you know, you're not messing with my money. Let it be and stop feeling guilty about that. You guys need a break. You guys know that they project. And listen, if you listen to how they're projecting, what they're saying, stop arguing with them. It's a waste of your time and energy. Stop arguing with them. They're going to project. Narcs are going to narc. They be, be around. They, they, they're just narking. That's what they do. They narc. I couldn't even get it out of my mouth. That's what narcissists do. And once you understand that is what they do, you have to make a decision whether you still want to be a part of that or you're going to let your emotions drive you to, well, you know, I'm obligated to and I have to. Hopefully this has helped. Now check this out. So at the end of this video, I want to make sure that you guys are registering for that conference. I want you guys to be there. Go watch the other video where I talked about what I'm going to be talking about in um, the conference. We have a great lineup. Me, of course, as your host, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be talking to you from 8 to 12 o'clock. We're going to have a lunch, a lunch session, and you will be served um, a Greek buffet, beautiful Greek buffet. It is at the Hilton Dallas Lincoln Center. Um, you'll be uh, uh, provided with a lunch buffet, so it'll be a working lunch. And You have my friend, Miss Bridget Griffin, who is a um, domestic violence, a YWCA domestic violence legal advocate here in King County, Seattle, Washington. She sees these kind of cases all the time. She's very aware of narcissist abuse and narcissism. She watches it happen um, in the courts, and she helps the victims and talks to the victims. She can tell you a lot of things that she sees that you need to know not do when you go to court and how to conduct yourself and how not to argue, you know, then you have, uh, my big brother, his name is pastor. Well, he's a pastor, but we're not, this is not a church uh, conference. This is a, an overcoming narcissist abuse conference, but Marcus Monroe is going to be there and he's going to be talking about the laws of mentality. He's going to be talking to you guys about these alpha males, these groups that are now forming narcissist training narcissists, narcissist training young men or men that have been hurt and wounded or just need direction or need better self-esteem, but they're really teaching them how to dominate a woman, how to find these six-figure women these, these women and to dominate these women, you know, um, and like I said, he, that is his platform. That's what he talks about. And I want him to talk to you guys about this because this is something that is emerging and you don't need to get caught up in it. He's going to tell you the MO. They're going to tell you exactly how they train, you know, but I want you guys to be there, especially you ladies, you need to, under, and, and, and men, but you need to be there so you can get yourself prepared for what is coming up, what is happening for you guys to be on guard, to protect yourself. You ain't got to have all of that right there. Sometimes you need to be single and heal first. So the more information you get, the more you can put some shields up to protect yourself. Then I come back at tw uh, from two to um, four or five o'clock. And then after that, you have my big sister, Kathy Gibson, who's the host of uh, My Life is Intentional. Then, of course, you have my mother, my spiritual mom, my leader, my, 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 my sugar bear. You know, my powerful woman, powerful woman who is the host of uh, Helen Sadler, your destiny helper. She's going to be there um, and she she can have the platform to talk about whatever she wants to. But I want you guys to be there with us because I'm going to be talking to you guys about you guys ask the question all the time is how did I get here? How do I keep attracting them? Well, you're focusing on them. We need to focus on you and we need to go to the root. We need to go to the foundations, you know, the parenting styles, you know, what type of parenting styles your caregivers had and how it resulted in particular attachment styles and not only attachment styles, even your love languages, you know, what type of love languages you have and that right. A lot of that plays into how you keep attracting these predators. Predators smell wounds. 
predators smell wounds. A vulture will fly around a dying animal. A vulture will fly around an animal that is mortally wounded or wounded. And many times, especially women, I'm a strong woman. I'm a six-figure woman. I got a business. I got this going on. Uh, up until the time that I met him, I was doing great for myself. That narcissist smelt a wound. And most of the time you hear people saying they're not attracted to you just because you're weak. It's not that you're weak in general. It's that you have a festering wound or you have a wound that was never that was never um, healed. And they can smell that wound. They can find the most powerful people because it looks good for their reputation. It looks good for their reputation. But they can seek out that one little spot, that one thing that was never dealt with. And they can find that one wound and find that one little thing that was never dealt with. And a lot of times, and I'm going to talk about it, pride, when you're prideful and you're kind of arrogant and not kind of, but when you're prideful and arrogant, that's a mantle that, that covers that covers underlying issues. That pride, that wanting to be seen and making sure everybody knows me and I'm like, you know, whatever I am, that is a mantle that you take to cover underlying issues. And we're going to talk about those underlying issues. And then most of the time you always hear about, you know, the overt, the covert narcissist, the somatic, the uh, cerebral. We're going to talk about manipulative styles. What does the manipulation tell you about the individual that's manipulating? Well, in this case, a narcissist, but manipulative people. You know, what does that manipulative manipulation say? What is it that they're trying to do? And how do you recognize it? What are they doing? You know, and so we need to talk about this. And then, of course, we'll go back to why it's important to gray rock. Why is it important to no contact? You know, we're going to talk about stuff like that. So I want you guys to be there at this conference. If you can, you come out to see me. Bring your mask and bring out your sanitation stuff. Bring your mask because we're going to be sitting there with a mask. You come out there cutting up and deciding you ain't going to wear no mask. You know, I'm going to politely escort you out the door. So you bring your mask so we can be safe because some of us are traveling from other states. And a lot of states are not as open as Texas is. Texas is open, but you got other people coming from other states. You don't know what's happening when we come in there, but we're going to stay safe. And if you got your shot, bring your card, you know, but at the same time as wear a mask so we can protect each other. So I'm going to have a mask on until I start talking, you know, and then you, we're going to stay safe though. Okay. We're going to stay safe, but I want you guys to come out. If you can come out, come out. This is a $3,500 conference and I'm providing you with this conference. If you're going to be online, it's $200, but you're going to be there for the whole conference. If you're going to come general admissions, it's $280 and you're going to make, we're going to make sure we feed you. You're going to have coffee. You're going to have something to drink. We're going to make sure you're taking care of. And we're going to take like 10 minute breaks every hour to make sure that you can stretch your legs so you don't fall asleep. Bring your notebook. I'm going to try to make sure I bring notebooks for you guys. Bring a notebook, bring something to write on, you know, and I'm, I will try to make sure because I'm traveling from Washington to, um, from Washington to Texas. So a lot of stuff I have to send ahead of me. And so I'm going to try to make sure that I have some, something for you guys to write on notebooks or something. Um, those of you that are doing VIP, you'll the whole conference, and then at seven o'clock we're gonna meet uh, at the hotel again, and we're gonna um, get into your, your transportation, which is the limousine transportation, to go to a restaurant of my choice, which is gonna be a steak and seafood restaurant. And you guys, we're going to have you escorted. Uh, my team and I will have you escorted by limousine over to the restaurant so that you can spend time as my very special guest, and we can get to know each other as we got these cheeks full of food. Just and I got to watch myself because I am an old soldier. I eat fast and I look at my plate and look up and keep eating. Um, and so everybody knows I eat fast. I need to slow down. But you guys come on out so you can spend time with me and I can show you my appreciation, especially as my VIPs. I want to be there because I want to be able to see who's on my YouTube channel. Who are you guys? Who is it that, that is supporting me? I want to be able to hug you. You know, if that's okay with you, hug you, shake your hand. You know, I want to be able to touch you, touch your hand. Not in a freaky way. No, you know, I'm not going to touch you in a freaky way. But I'm going to touch your hand. I want to I want to be able to hug you, take a picture with you. I want you guys to talk uh, talk to me. You know, I, I want to see how you're feeling. You know, I want to see you smile. And so I appreciate you, all your support. So make sure you go check out. I'm going to put the link back under the video. But I have a video that's talking about the whole conference, exactly what I was just talking about. The whole conference. There's a link there. There's a link on my community tab here on YouTube. There's a link on, um, if you go to my Facebook page, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse, and scroll down, there's a link there. Go, excuse me, go and register. Those of you that are VIPs, 
Some of you have already registered as VIPs. Expect a phone call. I have to get in today. I have a short day today because I have another event going on in the evening. But as soon as I can, I'm emailing everybody, checking in with everybody, let you know. Those of you that have registered, I've got your registration. VIP, I'm going to be personally calling you. So make sure that you prepare. I'm going to give you a call just so I can tell you thank you so much for supporting me and supporting my vision. The vision is um, hopefully next year I'm going to do Dallas and then I'm going to go to Atlanta. I want to go to Atlanta. And as we begin to grow, I want to keep the same team that I have. You guys saw the pictures of the team. I have an awesome team that I'm going to be working with. Uh, and then, you know, our um, uh, master and mistress of ceremonies. Excellent, excellent, excellent people. Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Jeremy and Connie Jones. They're just people of excellence exquisite and, and fashionable, honey. They be looking good and stuff. They look good as a couple too, but um, just an excellent couple that are going to bring a different type of ambiance. And then I have a great team. A lot of them are people that um, were my moderator, my moderators and my uh, people that support me on YouTube that are flying in to assist. And so a lot of you guys that are also my moderators on here, you let me know so that the next time we um we travel and go places you know you can come out and you moderators can be seen by the people that you're moderating so they can see you and meet you um and you can assist me when it comes to the um to the conference and keep in mind that these conference um they're they're going to grow they're going to get big and so right now as we're growing the hotel is prepared if we need to go to a bigger room to accommodate us as we're growing and so you know I want to go to Atlanta I want to go to California I want to come up to New York I think someone asked me to come to Philly. I, I definitely want to do Hawaii because I got some supporters out there in Hawaii. We can walk around in our bikinis and then y'all going to judge me. Y'all ain't going to judge me. But we can, we can, especially like in Hawaii, we can do a conference, go to a luau, you know, and enjoy our company as a group. We can do things and, you know, eventually we'll work up to a cruise. You know, we can do a cruise. You guys fly out so you can get on the ship. And we do a cruise, a conference on a cruise, but this is going to be growing, but I want it to be of excellence. I want it to be eventually where we don't leave, um, you know, the place that we're doing the conference at. We have dinner and then the dinner will be a fancy semi-formal formal, but I want you guys to feel important. I want you guys to feel relevant. I want you, you've been through so much in your life. You have been through so much in your life dealing with these narcissists so broken. I want you to be able to take one day, like uh, the song Holiday by, uh, by Madonna holiday just take one day out of life i messed the whole song up but i want you guys to take one day out of life to be able to come and feel fancy feel bougie you know i want you to feel relevant i want you to meet other people that have the same experiences as you guys do and come out and join us now i know this is a long video and i apologize but thank you guys so much for supporting me make sure that you subscribe to my channel dr carmen bryant overcoming narcissist abuse go check out my mother's um youtube channel it is uh, Helen Sadler, your destiny helper. Make sure you go over to HAPS. Um, I don't know if she's on Facebook yet. She'll be coming on YouTube. Kathy Gibson, my life is intentional. Um, her and um, Apostle Helen come on every Wednesday evening, um, unless they have other um, uh, events that they're at. Um, they come on and uh, Helen Sadler, your destiny helper, Apostle Helen Sadler, they're on there um, as a team. So she is her co-host. Um, make sure you check her out. She speaks a lot to women. Your your relevance, your, you know, talks about you being a queen, you know, the powerful woman that you are. And ladies, you know, you come out here, we're going to make you feel irrelevant. You know, you're going to feel relevant and important, beautiful. Because some of us are just, you know, just haven't figured out you're beautiful yet. Who cares if you look like Fiona? You're still beautiful with your Fiona looking self. Thick, small, tall, skinny. It doesn't matter. You got teeth. You don't have teeth. Don't matter. You're beautiful. You are beautiful. We're going to see if we're going to get us some crowns out there for the um, for the conference. And make sure those of you that want coaching, you're welcome to contact me, Dr. Carmen Bryant at, uh, at Outlook.com. Um, and send me an email. I'll send you my rates for services. Those that are looking for counseling, unless you're in the state of Washington, I cannot provide you with counseling. However, I do team up with BetterHelp.com. I think it's a forward slash, y'all. I keep saying backslash, but I think it's forward slash Dr. Carmen Bryant. So BetterHelp.com forward slash, I think it's a forward slash Dr. Carmen, and you will get a 10% discount. Some of you need counseling before you get coaching. Some of you have some deep rooted issues, you know, family issues. And even in this conference, 
I would um, address certain things so you'll know what to look for when you look for your counselors because some of them don't understand narcissist abuse. But you'll know how to use, um, you know, you'll know exactly and you have to, it's like peeling an onion. You have to go to the root of the problem and each time you, you look for a counselor, you look for specific things or you tell them specific things that you want to work on. You know, especially family foundations. You know, how your mindset is, where, what you're thinking, how you've been traumatized. So betterhelp.com, a lot of those counselors are aware of narcissism abuse and so and I've heard some very good reviews and yes I do receive commission off of it however I support them wholeheartedly I support betterhelp.com they're awesome because they've also asked me to come and do counseling on their platform I just don't have the time to do it so I'm not on the platform but you go betterhelp.com forward slash Dr. Carmen get a 10% discount having money issues, let them know uh, they may help you uh, financially with the grant. It doesn't mean it's going to be free, but they will assist you um, to help you to make sure that you can get in there. I appreciate all of you. I thank you so, so much for being here to support me. You guys have a beautiful day. This was a long video, but that's all right. I appreciate you guys. You guys have a wonderful day. Go be great. See you Sunday.